Good morning, Facebook family, and welcome to our Mondays Reflect and Revive. This morning, I'm going to share a little bit about your foundation, and is it a firm foundation? What is your foundation? Where do you put your trust? Who do you lean on? Um, also, in knowing that God is a God of second chances and that He has our back. And the scripture I'm going to use is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm going to start with verse 6. And it says, I planted the seed in your heart and Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. It was God who made it grow. It doesn't matter who led us to Christ. It doesn't matter who, you know, encouraged us in the Lord. What matters is that God made it, you know, made it possible for it to grow. Verse 7. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What is important is that God makes the seed to grow. The one who plants and the one who water, waters works together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are at God's field. You are God's building. Verse 10. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder now others are building on it but whosoever is building on the foundation must be very careful verse 11 for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have and that is jesus christ verse 12 anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials gold silver jewels wood hay or straw but on the judgment day fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done the fire will show if a person's work has any value you know it's like the hebrew boys in the in the fiery furnace you know they stood the ground and they weren't the only ones in there jesus was in there with them you know it's tried by fire um just like the story of of silver or gold being put through the fire you know it exposes and it shines, you know, after, you know, everything that is not impure has been burnt off. That's the same for me and you. Um, verse 14, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burnt up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Verse 16, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you you know that's why it's important to know what comes in what do you allow in your heart what do you allow in this body what do you allow in your mind what do you allow to hear what do you allow to watch you know what do you allow you know um, um, the words that come out of your mouth you know, what are you allowing? This is a temple and a temple should be taken care of. Um, verse, uh, I think someone through escaping the flames. 16 says, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you? You know, the Holy Spirit lives in us. That's why we should take care of these vessels. Verse 17, God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Stop dece deceiving yourself. If you think you are wise by the world's standards, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. Is that crazy? You know, you're wise to the standards of this world, but if you really want to be wise, you need to basically not know all that stuff. You know, be fools to that, you know. Which that's crazy because, well, it's not crazy, but it's like everything with the flesh. You know, it's so easy to go with our, our, our fleshy desires, our nature of who we are. As somebody said in Sunday school, you know, you know, it doesn't take much for somebody to lie because it's, a, it's our sinful nature. You know, it takes more for somebody to tell the truth. You know, that should tell you something. That's the world. The world that we serve is in sin and it is working out of fleshy desires. Um, verse um, 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolish to God. As the scripture says, 
He traps the wise in the snares of their own cleverness. You think you're being smart? You're not being smart enough, you know, because you're the one that's going to be caught in your own trap. That's crazy. Verse 20. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows they are worthless. Not my words. It's in the scripture. And if you don't believe me, go look for it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 23. And I didn't share the first verses, but it's verses 1 through 23. And verse 20. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows they are worthless. Verse 21. So don't boast about following a particular human leader. For everything belongs to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or the world or life and death or the present or the future. Everything belongs to you. Why? And you are, and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Now, they're talking about believers. You know, they're talking about the ones that have accepted Jesus Christ, not only as their Savior, but the Lord of their lives. You know, and that is a firm foundation. Is accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. That is a foundation that cannot be shaken, you know, but if you put your trust in other men and women, if you put your trust in the things of this world, if you put trust and lean on your bank account or your home or your spouse, or, it's not like putting our trust and laying up the foundation in who we are in Jesus Christ. You know, you need to really check yourself and where you're at spiritually and what is it that you're doing for the kingdom of God. You know, and not only that, you have to check yourself and what you are allowing, you know, what you take in through your mouth, what you hear through your ears, you know, what you speak with your mouth, what, you know, this is Satan's battlefield, you know, right here are, is where we struggle. It's like, should I, should I not, you know, this is where you need to get it straight and make sure that you're connecting to the will of God. You know, it's amazing to me in, in our Sunday school class, how God always confirms with the service. And that's what he did Sunday. And it was all about prayer. Is our communication with the Father. That that is just our our, our foundation is is God. Is just talking to him. It's just loving him and, and, and putting him first before anything or everyone. But it's so easy to get caught up and put everyone and everything before God. You know, as I said in Sunday school class, you know, we want to use God when we're having a hard time and we forget about him when we're having a good time. That's not a firm foundation. That is your foundation. That is a foundation built with man's stuff, not God's stuff. You know, firm foundation is, is first of all, yes, Jesus Christ. You know, second of all is that you need to be in, in, in his word. You need to be talking to him. And not only do you have to be talking to him, but you need to be listening. And not only listen, but be obedient to what he's asking you to do. It's tough. You know, it, it, I've learned that it's been tougher being a Christian than living out in the world. You know, living out in the world, you can do whatever, however. It doesn't matter. And you know something else is that when you're living out in the world, people don't want to bug you. People don't don't snitch on you. People don't want to throw rocks at you. People Because you know what? You're doing what they're doing. But get connected with God try to do the right thing and bam bam not only people in the world but satan satan don't want you to be at peace satan don't want you to be obedient satan don't want you to understand the firm foundation that you have in jesus christ satan does not want you to understand the power of prayer satan wants to have you in the grip of his hand like he used to but it ain't happening here. So we have a firm foundation. Are you able to stand on that? Are you making changes to be better? Are you listening to the word of God? Are you listening to his voice? You know, we all have choices. God is a God of second chances. It's up to us if we take it or we don't. You know, either you're going to live, you know, in this world and, and do what this world wants and really, you know, be wise in your own or live how God wants you to live and really be a fool to what the world has. You know, choices, 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 right? Anyways, I'm believing that you'll make the right choice into serving God. And those that don't know the, don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, I'm going to pray that God would send you somebody to tell you the truth. Because I'm telling you, it's not about 
drugs. It's not about drinking. It's not about men. It's not about women. You know, it's not about this world. You know, it's about serving the one that created us and created this world. Precious Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your goodness upon our lives, dear Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are such an amazing Father. I thank you, Lord, that you have given me so much, dear Lord, and opened my eyes of my heart and my spirit, Heavenly Father, to be able to follow you and do the things that you would have me to do regardless what comes my way. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for my brothers and sisters in Christ that listen, the Lord, and that share, Heavenly Father, the good news still, God. I pray for those, Heavenly Father, that are so blinded by the wicked one. I pray that their eyes would be open, that you would give them revelation, and you would send somebody to tell them the truth. I ask you, the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, the Lord, that you would help those that are standing on the rock would be a rock to somebody else. I pray, Heavenly Father, and ask you. Mm. There's someone out there that is struggling and doubting because you've been let down and let down and let down. That's just a lie from the enemy. God is here to refresh and renew your mind if you allow him. It says, cast all your cares. Cast all your cares. That's what I hear is, cast your cares upon me. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. He knows who you are. I don't, but he knows. And he wants you to know that you are loved and you are worthy. You are so loved and you are so worthy that he takes the time to minister through vessels that are his to be able to touch those that need a special touch so i just lift you up in the name of jesus christ and i pray that you would know that you would know that you would know that this is for you and that you would make a change and you would not doubt and your mind would be refreshed and renewed because god is working it out and he has not forgotten about you in jesus mighty name god bless this is the day that the lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it goodbye